right, hello guys. So today is the second day of Avalanche Summit in Barcelona and uh, we met here with Alex van Erik, uh, founder of Nansen. Uh, nice to meet you here, Alex. Nice to meet you too. So can you tell us about your journey in crypto? When did you discover crypto first and how did you get involved in the industry? Yeah, I actually discovered uh, Ethereum while I was living here in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So I was working at a media group as a data science manager and I was hanging out in the kitchen with some of the engineers and they told me about Ethereum. This was mid-2017, kind of right before the ICO boom started. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I thought it was interesting. I found it more interesting than Bitcoin, which I had ignored for many years, sadly, uh, and missed out on. Uh, and so I started looking at Ethereum. I got a bit interested in ICOs. And a few months later, I decided to leave my job and start working full-time in crypto. So I moved to Hong Kong. Uh, I joined a startup there to build out the data team. Uh, that startup uh, failed miserably, uh, but uh, I managed to hire some great people for my team. So we ended up uh, co-founding Nansen late 2019. And Nansen is a blockchain analytics platform, and we help uh, investors discover new opportunities, both in the NFT space, the DeFi space, to perform due diligence, and also to set up uh, smart alerts. Um, to get notified of important events on the blockchain. So, yeah. And how did the idea of starting Nansen come to you? Was it like yeah. your own problem? <laughs> yeah, to, to a large extent, it was kind of scratching my own itch. Uh, I felt that we didn't really have great analytics tools available uh, as investors. The closest thing was maybe the compliance and AML tools like Chainalysis, mm -hmm. but they were only accessible to, you know, clients who were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, a, a year. So we felt like the man in the arena, the people who are actually cre uh, trading and investing in crypto, mm -hmm. deserve to have better analytics tools. Um, and so we set out to build the most comprehensive database of uh, wallet labels. So the unique thing about Nonsen is we have the on-chain data, mm -hmm. but we also have labels for the addresses. That means you can track flow of funds uh, in and out of exchanges. You can understand which DeFi protocols are most uh, hot with regards to smart money putting uh, funds into them. Uh, and the same with NFT collections as well. So yeah, so it, it was scratching my own itch and I realized that we didn't really have good enough analytics tools. And uh, which chains do you currently support? We started with Ethereum. Many people asked us to add support for Bitcoin, but we felt, you know, maybe that's not exactly where the world is headed. Mm -hmm. So we've focused on the smart contract platforms. Mm -hmm. So after Ethereum, we added Polygon, and then we've added other chains such as Phantom, Ronin, Avalanche, of course, which is why we're here at the summit. Uh, and we also recently started rolling out Terra support mm -hmm. and Solana support. Hopefully we will start rolling it out next week. Uh, what about Nier, Cosmos? Have any plans to integrate them? Yeah, uh, we, nothing specific, uh, but I think near the ecosystem for Nier is quite interesting. Uh, with Cosmos, I'm personally not super uh, up to speed on that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I know we have people in the team who are and are very you know up to date. So it could be something that if we see there's enough organic traction, uh, it's probably something we would want to add. But since it's not EVM, it's a bigger lift for us technically to implement. Uh, as compared to uh, many of the EVM chains that we support. And you mentioned during your panels that uh, you as well track NFTs, you have your NFT index. Uh, can you tell more about that? Yeah, so I think uh, it's fair to say that Nansen has kind of become the number one NFT analytics platform. A lot of people feel like you need to have Nansen to understand what's happening in the NFT space. Uh, and so we have NFT Paradise, which is a ranking of the most traded NFT collections mm -hmm. um, in the last 24 hours. We also have NFT God Mode, which allows you to do due diligence on a specific NFT collection. And you can see who's been buying it um, and who's been selling it as well. Uh, and the NFT index, the problem uh, for many larger investors, especially institutional investors, is that they cannot really go and buy individual NFTs. You know, they don't have the competency or ex experience to do that, but it's also uh, not that easy to deploy a lot of capital into uh, NFTs. So the NFT index, you can think of almost like the S&P 500. So it's a market cap weighted index of the top 500 collections. That's the main index we have. We also have other indices for, um, blue chip NFTs, metaverse, gaming, and so on. 
Uh, but effectively, it's a way to aggregate like what's happening with the NFT collections uh, at a macro level. So you can monitor how is the full market evolving over time, is it going up or down, etc. And does it track NFTs on all chains you support, or is it specifically only for Ethereum? NFTs? Yeah, right now it's only for Ethereum, but I hope we can expand it to other chains soon. We do have plans to support other blockchains for NFTs this upcoming quarter. Yeah. And what's your personal relation to NFTs? Do you hold any NFTs? Yeah, I do hold quite a few NFTs. Um, uh, on your avatar you have an NFT. I, I have a pudgy penguin as my avatar. Sadly, the price of pudgy penguins has not been very uh, uplifting. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think NFTs are fun. I own uh, quite a few, mostly mostly for fun. Uh, sometimes you flip them mm -hmm. as well. You buy and sell, buy low and hopefully sell high. Uh, I minted 40 board apes and I sold all of them too early. Um, and of course, I just <laughs> not receive an airdrop. <laughs> I did not receive the airdrop. I missed out on, I think probably around 12 million US dollars wow. <laughs> because I did that. Um, so you know, I'm. Sometimes, if I can't sleep at night, I will think about these 40 board apes, but yeah. Um, and then I, I, of course, discovered board apes through Nansen. So it's kind of a way also to dog food the product, right? Where I can test out, um, you know, see what's trending. And sometimes I will buy some of the NFTs I discovered there. Uh, so you have all this access to the information about trends. So do you have any uh, current altcoin picks? Oh, man, that's, uh, that's a tricky one. I think... Um, you never know with crypto, right? Prices and fundamentals can be quite disconnected sometimes. I do think there are some projects that uh, came around, you know, in DeFi summer 2020 that at this point have very solid fundamentals. So things like Yearn, Wi-Fi Finance, uh, or sorry, Yearn Finance or Wi-Fi. Um, Aave as well, I think is around $20 billion um, value locked uh, in Aave across all these different chains. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with the tokens. And like Lido Finance is another one, um, which I'm also a DAO member of um, for, for decentralized uh, staking. Mm -hmm. And I think many of these projects have very strong fundamentals. If you look at TVL uh, in particular, um, Lido is, you know, ha is by far the biggest staking pool for ETH2. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aave, you know, $20 billion locked uh, with V3 just having launched its multi-chain. Uh, I think Urine Finance will do uh, revised tokenomics. So I kind of like these tokens. Um, I don't actually own all of them, so I probably should since I now uh, shill them. Um, but uh, no, I think, I think those are interesting projects. I don't know what's going to happen with the coins, but I'm pretty sure that these projects will be around for a long time. And uh, how do you see institutional interest uh, to DeFi, to NFTs? You mentioned so that institutionals uh, are interested in buying NFTs. So do you have any examples of uh, companies? institutional investors uh, yeah. find this NFT index? We, we have some institutional customers who come to us to be to get help with uh, execution. So like, mm -hmm. you know, basically buying their first NFTs and also scouting out what is the right uh, items to, to buy at a fair price. Um, we have not, that's not really our core business. So we've mostly been sort of advising them informally. Um, but, you know, I think at this point, many crypto native funds in particular uh, hold NFTs. You know, if you if you look at Dragonfly, if you look at Mechanism Capital, uh, Defiance, you know, many of these um, many of these funds maybe were somewhat skeptical to, towards NFTs initially, but you know, th I'm not sure they own with their own funds, mm -hmm. but uh, the people who run the funds definitely own NFTs, which you can see on Twitter and so on. Yeah. So, but mostly it's crypto natives that are uh, looking at it. Um, and then I do think NFTs in general are a very good gateway into crypto because it's a bit more tangible and fun, I think. So, yeah. But it's pretty hard to, you know, deploy a lot of capital into NFTs. That's why I think you need more index products, for example, for NFTs. So, yeah, there's still a lot of interesting stuff to be done. And you are developing as well Nansen API for institutionals. Can you tell more about that? Yeah, we have Nansen Query, which is a programmatic way to get um, do analyses and, and get access to Nansen data. Mm -hmm. And we also are working on a, a Nansen API that uh, some of our early customers are testing out. Um, but yeah, happy to, if anyone's interested, they can reach out and we can connect them with the right people to test it out. 
and uh, you just uh, closed your round uh, in uh, December, raised 75 million dollars and actually from a lot of uh, traditional investors, Excel, A16Z and some others. Yep. Uh, so now you are trying to expand to like, the wi wider world. <laughs> to yeah, I think the idea is, um, personally I think it's very important that we expand beyond just the crypto bubble. Of course, you know, I like uh, also degening and uh, jumping around in DeFi protocols and flipping NFTs. But at the end of the day, I do think we want to bring crypto to the masses. And to do that, I personally believe that you need to have strong backers who have seen companies grow uh, much beyond what any company really in crypto, you know, has managed to do so far. So the thinking is, you know, we started with very crypto native investors in our seed round. Then we had A16Z, lead our Series A, which I think is a great VC that has one foot in crypto and one foot in the broader uh, internet sector or tech sector. And then Excel is another uh, great investment fund which uh, can help us really expand beyond crypto. And at the end of the day, Nansen is also a SaaS company, right? It's a software as a service company. So it's a more, it's a business model that they understand and they can help us grow fast. And uh, what is your, in, uh, you know, what in your opinion is needed for the mass adoption of crypto or DeFi? I do think that the user experience is still pretty appalling. It's, it's really bad. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so when you bring new people in, it's just too complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, gas costs on many chains uh, are too high. Mm -hmm. And so I think there needs to be uh, simpler ways to start using crypto. Um, I think in that sense, I kind of applaud Coinbase for having focused on that a lot initially, but I do think you need something that is more Web3 native. So I would say that what we need is, you know, at the end of the day, is better interfaces to get people started with crypto because it's still very complicated and confusing. And so what are your thoughts on the development of gaming, uh, on blockchain, the metaverse? Yeah, I think, uh, I think gaming is probably the most likely near-term industry to take advantage of crypto. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other stuff where blockchain is interesting. For example, you know, real estate, uh, you know, supply chains and so on. But I think those are still pretty far away. Gaming is already digital. So it's, it's kind of adjacent to crypto. It also is very tightly linked with internet culture. So you have a lot of overlap in user base. Um, so I, I think that, uh, and also if you play a game and you earn like skins or items, it just seems kind of silly that you can't bring them with you anywhere, that they're stuck yeah. inside the game. Um, so I think it's just a massive opportunity for, for game developers and game studios to start working with blockchains. Because blockchains will be the financial fabric of the metaverse. And I don't think you will be using credit cards in the metaverse. So um, yeah, so I think crypto really is very nicely connected with, with gaming. And probably Web3 gaming is going to be a huge trend. There's going to be a lot of disappointing projects too. But I do think you will have some big successes. Uh, do you have Axie Infinity among your partners? Can you tell what exactly do you do with that? Yeah, so first of all, we have an Axie Infinity ecosystem dashboard where anyone can check out what's happening with the Axie Infinity ecosystem. So the, the growth metrics that they care about. And we also have Ronin integration, the chain that Axie Infinity or Sky Mavis uh, created. Mm -hmm. So that means you can monitor what is happening on the blockchain for Ronin as well. And uh, can you tell us uh, what data do you have, which uh, blockchain games are the most trained in which coins? Top of my head, I can't, but the best way to do it is to go to nonsense.ai and test out the product. Okay, and can you tell, uh, share some of common plans for Nansen? Yeah, we'll definitely have better support for Terra, better support for Solana, and Arbitrum as well. Uh, and then I hope we will be able to expand to even more chains and L2s over the next few months. Um, we have some interesting uh, features coming up with regards to social networks that I think will be quite uh, mind-blowing, hopefully, to some people. Uh, um, you mean like cooperation with decentralized social networks or what exactly? Yeah, so, you know, mm, there should be better ways to communicate between people uh, in the blockchain ecosystem. All our communication platforms now are not crypto-native, like Discord, mm -hmm. Telegram, yeah, yeah. 
Twitter. These are just communication channels that we have ad adopted, but they're not really crypto native. And so I think there's room for improvement there. And I can't reveal too much, but in a few months, there's something interesting that we will release. Okay, we'll wait for some more updates from you. Thank yeah. you for such interesting discussion. Thank you.